I finally got it. My own Traxxas TRX4 2021 Bronco. I've been on the waiting list forever. I buy my RCs just like all you guys do and girls. And finally it came. Um, is it the best RC of the year? Or is it the same stuff as what they introduced three, four years ago? Hmm. Hang in there and find out more. All right, it is a good day at RC Review because I get something new, but I go back to my roots. You know, about three years ago, I decided to jump back into the RC hobby, my childhood hobby, uh, and get this thing called the Traxxas TRX4 Defender. You know, it looked so advanced, so technology driven that you could do some trailing, some crawling, and it looked so cool. Uh, and I bought it right here. And this is actually the same one. I just changed the body and changed some parts here and there, you know, modded it like a proper RCer. And I really rediscovered and fell in love with the hobby. So much so that I created my own YouTube channel, RC Review. You know, it all started from this and I'm gonna edit in some of my original video. It is so janky. Here to talk about the hottest trail crawler ready to run kits in the market. Traxxas TRX4. But what's cool is my content was honest and genuine. And when I called out that this was better than the SEX-102 or the Vatera, you know, oh man, those, those nations just got so upset at me, crucified me and said no chance. But really this car revolutionized the hobby and it pushed the envelope on what is possible with a scale trail crawler. Um, so, but now, based on this platform, they put this new vehicle based on the most exciting, one of the most exciting real cars today. It's a golden age of cars, I think, especially SUVs and trucks. You know, the, the 2021 Ford Bronco. And they really based it off this platform. It is the same wheelbase, 12.8 inches. Most RC uh, crawlers are 12.3, so it's a little bit longer. You know, it is, it is five, five channel receiver. It has locking, unlocking diffs, a two-speed transmission, you know, a, a big motor, a 550 can motor. And it's really put together everything they learned from here and the Bronco and their, and, their, and their TRX4 Sport into this new platform, okay? But did they change it enough or is it kind of the same thing? And is it still relevant? Let me do a deep dive with you guys on this. So here it is, the 2021. TRX4, what do you guys think? Kind of impressive, huh? What shocked me when I got it was the color wasn't quite yellow. It looked yellow in a lot of pictures, but it's more like a like an orange, a yellow orange, and it's more flat. Uh, so it's 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 kind of got a, a modern kind of palette to it. Uh, beautiful body, clear windows, but they they really they really tinted it heavily. It's a little too much uh, in the indoor. Uh, outdoor, it looks a little better. Nice mirrors. <laughs> Big molded piece here with real mirrors that actually do the job. Sight guides here. Beautiful headlights, uh, the buckets uh, that they have, really scale looking. The, but it doesn't have lights yet. It's a kit that you're gonna have to spend a lot of money for. The fenders are super cool. They are an additional piece, but they look blended in and they're kind of rubberized. Speaking of rubberized, the whole Lexan feels rubberized you know so it looks diff feels and looks different from other lexan bodies so it, it has a little bit more detail and a little bit you know it's it, look at that it doesn't have that that, that the clangy clangy sound um, so it is an interesting new development from them a little more detail bumpers are awesome it's got a fake winch over here sliders look the same as what they did on the defender uh, and then a spare tire on the rear that you can remove, just like the Defender, okay? So the real innovation comes here. So 
instead of the body clip system or hiding the body clips and putting the clips on the on the underside which is uh, nice appearance wise but very difficult for usability they just put these new tab system so here are the tabs so I've only, it's only, only been my fifth time doing it, but now I can find it. So I think after a while, you'll just, you'll just find it so easy. It's got a nice curvature to it, uh, just the shape of your finger. And it is so cool. You know, I've seen a lot of body mounting systems, uh, some tabs from RC four wheel drive, some Velcro from, from who does Velcro red cap and a, a few uh, magnet mounts usually aftermarket. And none of them quite work that well uh, because the easier they are to put on, they come off during crashing uh, or tumbles. So here it is. One. It's a heavy body, but it's not as heavy as, uh, as the uh, Defender. It's about 640 grams. And the, you know, the Defender was about 900. Uh, and the, the tire, it, the tire here is 115. So what, uh, what are you at? 535. Uh, uh, if you took the, the spare tire out, maybe less than that. If you took the mount out as well, and, and so the the body and the body mounting system is the true story of this thing. The body is beautiful, and you know it is scale looking. It it it's kind of low. It's not as high as a Defender, and the corners are not as extended out. So you know it's gonna perform because it's a lot lower what, than what we're used to. Uh, and the corner weight, the roof weight, is more, more in the middle and, and not as high as before. So that was the promise. Okay. So locking and unlocking diffs uh, to give you a uh, good steering radius uh, and also good stability in trailing. And then we have a two-speed transmission. The two-speed transmission allows you to go 4.2 miles an hour on first gear and 9.7 miles an hour on second gear. So I tested that, made sure that was the case. And that's a revolution in itself because you can have low and high. Without this, you would need to go brushless system and the brushless systems are expensive. The good ones are, what do you say guys? Uh, 250 bucks, 300, uh, and it, won't even, it might not even have this kind of range. What have they improved? They definitely learned a lot. So the bumpers are amazing. Good, good uh, approach angle, departure angle, and the bumpers are rubberized or rubbery. And what that does is it allows it to flex, allows it to wrestle with a rock and budge a little bit. You know, when you have a super stiff bumper, it's just a disaster. You know, there's just, it looks good, but it doesn't perform. Um, so these, these are good. It has, a, it has a skid here that's very functional. And then the biggest problem of the early TRX-4s is the, the, what do you call that? The steering, servo steering horn was plastic and it would strip, guaranteed to strip. So this one is now metal. Good lesson there. Uh, the shock oil is, is quite heavy. So it matches the vehicle very well. It stabilizes it in the roughest climbs and in some of the trailing that you, I know you're gonna do. Uh, the foam on the tires is a little softer. It's more like this, when the Defender came out, it looked like the tires didn't perform because the foam, the foam was too hard. You know, it didn't allow it to conform. But with the Sport, it, it looks like they fixed it. So these look like Sport foams. And with this, this body, it's just a little heavier. It sits really well. It gives a lot of grip. So a lot, all my testing is gonna be with uh, these tires, hard, barely broken in, and you can see that they perform. So another, th another improvement in, in this equation is they put the forward battery mount right here. So uh, instead of right here, you can go here, and that affects your forward to backward weight significantly. A lot of strengths, you'll see from the running video that this thing shocked me in terms of performance. You just come to realize how much ahead of the game Traxxas was when they first created the Defender. You know, as heavy as that body was, it was slaying the trail. So, you know, with, with a little lower center of gravity, 
you could see that it could dominate. To, to put it on, so I'm not even uh, visually seeing where I'm going with this. I think I'm on, so you just press. So that's four clicks and you are on now. How do I lift this thing? I'm on. So that is the greatest revolution. The looks of it, the performance, pretty cool. So what's not cool? What's not good about it, okay? First thing is just 550 bucks. That's a lot of money. A lot of money for engineering that was already paid for. <laughs> if they put this at 450, now we're talking. Now we're talking my language, right? Um, but why they have to charge something for a borrowed uh, a borrowed platform, uh, not 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 newly developed, is a downer. But you know maybe maybe it's part of supply chain issues, uh, what have you. Okay, so that's weakness number one. Weakness number two is this this winch fall bar here really affects your approach angle. You know the bumper is a high. A, a very good approach angle bumper, but this thing is in the way of that approach angle. It just min, uh, reduces it by, I don't know, three to five degrees. So that's weakness number two. Weakness number three, I would say, is the Canyon Trail tires. I mean, the body is beautiful, but the tires are not beautiful. You know, they look like toy tires. Everyone's paying for licensed tires. Tires, the look of the tire is a big part of the look of the vehicle, right? Right? So the sidewalls and whatnot. Instead, we get the same crummy tire as three, four years ago. Weakness number four is the ESC is really tired. Uh, the XL5 is just not a great ESC for crawlers. It wasn't even made for crawlers. So consequently, it doesn't, it doesn't have a, a good drag brake. And what you'll see, what was holding me back in a lot of my test video, especially in descending, was the drag brake was not enough to hold the vehicle. Really an insufficient uh, ESC for this. Motor, I'm not gonna complain. It, uh, it, it does the job. Upgrade ready. And then the one thing I'll complain about too is the servo. So the servo um, is the same old servo that they've been using from three, four years ago. And it's good for it's good for the maybe the TRX4 Sport, uh, a fairly light vehicle, but this is a heavy vehicle, heavy body. It deserves a better servo, and they do have better servos. They have two better servos that fit right in here, but they want you to buy it. So that is a downer. The Luckily, it doesn't break as often as it did in the first batch of, uh, of servos that they did. There you go. Enjoy the running video. I got a ton this time. I did my homework. All right, let's do some comprehensive testing here, starting with top speed tests.
SCX-10 III. I felt this thing had a chance, so I gave it a good couple minutes, didn't quite make it. And line number four, the Wall of Doom, is a tough one. The entry is impossible for this rear spare tire. Uh, and it, it's close, but it's not, it can't quite put the front wheels down at the critical point. So it's not, it's just not going to work. The rear is just too heavy. The, I think that spare tire has something to do with it. So maybe we'll try taking it off later. And I'm right there guarding it. Didn't want to scratch it. All right. This is a tough one. Left turn with a bank, with a crack, everything going for it. And then here with a belly drag. Right here, I didn't want to punch it because it might fall backwards. I don't think I got the first crash in yet. So I backed up, got a little bit more flow, and boom, no problem. Quick turnaround, and boom. The descents are a little too fast, but it is, it is capable because it has got a long wheelbase, heavy rear. And right there, I did I did the little punch, no problem. And then here is you gotta straddle this this little hole. You can't fall in that hole, but if you straddle both sides of that little gully, it's okay. And then you gotta make that quick left turn. Steering radius really helped it out. We had a red cat marksman did a five point turn. Most things do a three point turn. And then right here, this is a tough one because it's a lot of side hill and a lot of rocks. So you need a lot of composure. And what I notice about this vehicle is it has the clearance to clear those rocks, but it's got this nice heavy shock oil that really keeps the, the chassis calm, even with a heavy body. But it allows it to articulate as well, you know, just not, not abruptly. So here, this is not really a line. I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but hey, but the vehicle is capable, so I kept I kept running with it. Maybe you'll find a little ridge there to straddle. But it's super interesting because it's not falling. You know, it's right at the limit. Things are dragging, and it's not falling. So here, even though I'm not succeeding, I'm learning a lot about the vehicle. And right here is a tough one, front rear, bump, no problem. I said, okay, let me turn around, let me do this crazy rock. This is very hard rock because a 12.3 inch wheelbase just doesn't have reach to claw its way up, but uh, this one is good. And here is a hole right on the right rear, but Right there, not good. But if it can just bring those those front wheels down, it'll go up. So it'll go up, right there, little bump, clear the bump, rocks here, step, it's called the Avery wall, no problem. Quick turnaround, it's easy to turn around too, by the way. And then here, descending. It's not as slow as I want. It's getting a little bit of momentum but it's able to
here's another one. Should be able to do this. But it's a little rear balanced. And I didn't want to gun it. So, didn't do so well on this test. Can probably do it if I wanted to risk flipping over backwards, looping out, so to, so to speak. All right, some rocky descents and climbs. This is the, the wheelhouse of a high clearance vehicle, such as this one going up 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 and what's really cool is you can see all the clearance all the articulation you can really choose and pick your line but with a vehicle like this you don't really need to you'll be fine pick an even harder line getting some rear hang up front hang up tire hang up no problem all right, so went back to this thing. I changed the tires to Proline Frenchers and took out the spare tire and went for the really difficult climbs because I think I was close before. And look at this, it's doing it. It's doing it. Truly incredible. And I think the difference was not really the trenchers, but removing the right rear tire. Because you can see, as you can see, the trenchers are not really gripping on this day. I had to do several attempts and then boom, look at the balance on this thing. So the shock oil has a lot to do with this, giving it the composure and the articulation. All right. Final question, is it fun? Is it fun to crawl? But is it fun to rally and maybe bash a little bit? Look at that, 9.7 miles an hour means you can actually have some fun with it. So that concludes this video. Hope you had fun and learned a little bit. Bottom line is it's not a new vehicle by any means, but there's enough improvements, enough balance in this one that I think it's worth it even at the high price of 550 so subscribe so you can see our next video on this where it's gonna be fully decked out thank you